basically, he's, he's bringing a different style. He's talking the truth. He's speaking, you know, he's, it's reality. He's not talking about this is how high my rims are or this is what I do in the street or whatever. He's speaking the truth. He's speaking a day-to-day -day life basis, you know what I'm saying? It's like, he's actually, if he was a person that you could actually speak to, his rhyme, basically, if you listen to his rhyme, he's talking to you directly. It's like he, you're having a personal conversation. Okay, so hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So I have a little bit of a numerology series on my channel. I don't do many videos about this stuff, but I do have a playlist so I will link it below in case you want to get more into numbers and what they mean. I've already done a couple already. So for today we're going to be embarking on angel number seven. Number seven um, and kind of its significance, what it can mean if you are seeing either seven as a lot of people call it lucky number seven or seven 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 or any amplified version of seven maybe even seventeen seventeen whatever it is if you're noticing a lot of sevens at this point in your life we're going to be talking about what that means basically if you're new to you know studying the numbers, numerology, or you've never heard about the word angel numbers before, don't be afraid. You don't have to use the terminology. It's just a way that we classify things so we know how to search it up and make sense of it. But basically, the simplified version is that numbers are light language. Light language, the language of light, also known as, you could call it, other beings, other entities, you could call it angels, guidance system, God, your higher self, whatever freaky terminology you want to give it, it doesn't matter at the essence of it. The idea of um, numerology and numbers and the communication factor in it is like you might be in a human body but there is more to you than just the physical self. There's another aspect and that other aspect of you and other aspects that are like that other aspect of you, they can communicate with people in physical bodies, human beings, and it's through light language. And so numbers are just one of the many signs that we are aware of, that we can become aware of to receive guidance. So a sign could come through synchronicity. Synchronicity is seeing numbers at a specific time or a certain time in your life or a certain time of the day. But there are many synchronicity, synchronicities, like getting into your car and hearing a specific song or thinking about someone and them calling you or dreaming about something and then it happening a week later. You know, there there's a multitude of synchronicities and numbers are just another synchronicity. It's a form of guidance. That's all you really need to know. So if you've been seeing the number seven, basically the number seven, lucky number seven as a lot of people refer to, it is a extremely spiritual number in the sense that it is uh, it. It relates to the esoterics, the spiritual journey, the sort of lonely, solitary part of the journey because when you're going through a really kind of embarking on a spiritual journey where you're trying to transcend, let's say, it becomes a very lonely journey because not everyone is embarking on this journey. So you lose a lot of friends, you lose, you know, you end relationships or they disappear or you become disconnected from society. You know, often that's what happens about the people who are very serious about embarking on this whole transcendence, let's say. So it is a very, very spiritual number, more so than the rest of them. It's really... I almost want to say that if you're actually really noticing sevens a lot, you're obviously really moving along on this sort of journey. You're obviously really into improving yourself and growth and, you know, um, constant change. And you're probably really reading up all these books and having awakenings and becoming enlightened or, you know what it is? It, 
and it's not to say that if you're not on your journey, you're not doing it, you know, even seeing number seven, if you're not necessarily doing those things or doing it hardcore, it could just be like a push in the right direction. Like, you see this number, you should be doing something spiritual. So any, anytime I see the number seven, I just really think about the esoteric aspect. And I really just think about the larger picture of life, the universe, the awakening, intuition and collective consciousness. That's actually a really important thing that's linked to number seven, the collective consciousness, meaning how every single thing on this planet, what we see and what we don't see, they're all interrelated. Everything is related. You know, those th that guidance system that I was talking about earlier in this video, even though we don't see it necessarily, it is connected to who we are, what we are, everything in this universe um, connected. So that is the grand idea behind number seven, the collective consciousness. Now, before we get deeper into these numbers, okay, there's a couple things you should know. So depending on how much you see the number, meaning let's start with how often you see it, you know? So if you see a number combination once or twice or whatever, um, if the more you see it, the more you're getting that message sent to you, okay? In the same way that the more a number is amplified, the more the strength of the message. So if you see one seven, that's the basis. Two sevens, that's a little stronger. Three, a little stronger. Four, a little strong. The more you see it, the more it is amplified. The next thing I want to say is there is a general consensus on what what all these numbers sort of mean and what things in the universe mean, right? We all kind of have a reference point. But at the end of the day, your guidance system is your guidance system. There is a universal guidance system, but that doesn't really you don't need to necessarily tune into that and chances are if you're just kind of more on a selfish journey which is how most of us start off where we want certain things in life so we kind of go off on let me further my you know my journey into myself so i can get all the things that i want and that's usually how it starts so you don't really have to tune into that unlimited conscious collective conscious guidance system because that comes with time but usually you're more centered on your own guidance system and your own guidance system is attuned to who you are meaning it knows how you notice things and what you relate to so some people might never get actual synchronicities from numbers because for them that just doesn't mean anything you know so it, you you're there is a certain something that you can get from the general idea of information that's out there, but you have to really evaluate it, start journaling it, writing it down, paying attention to how you feel when you see certain things, um, how you notice them and such, and that's how you will actually know what your personal guidance system is guiding you towards and telling you. Angel number seven is really just, um, it's like your guidance, just saying like, we're really proud of you. I'm proud of you. It, it's a sense of like whatever work, whatever you've been doing, maybe you've been changing your thoughts, maybe you've been changing your life, maybe you've made some difficult decisions and you know, you've altered many aspects of your life. Whatever it is that you've done, it is great. It is good. You are moving forward and your guidance is proud of you because you've done the right thing. It's also telling you that you will very soon reap the benefits of what you've been doing. So whether it seems like you've manifested what you want or changes in your life or not, you are soon going to reap the benefits. It might not be as soon as you would like it to, but it's more about when these, it's more about the fact that all that you've been doing and all that you're doing and all that you continue to do with this guidance and this like pat on the shoulders like, yeah, good job. All that you're doing, when you start to really reap the benefits, it's not just going to be as small or as big as you believe it to be, but it'll be so much better. It will be all that you've wanted, but even more, because we can't even begin to imagine the perfectness that the universe can provide us with. Number seven is really about, once again, the esoterics, the spiritual self. It could even be if you're seeing, let's say you've been down this journey of improving yourself and you know growth and such for a while, and you start noticing sevens all over the place, it might be a little um, nudge to you that maybe you need to 
um, go down the path of a job, a career that has to do with the esoterics, with the spiritual sort of aspects of life. Meaning that if it's something that you've already, always been kind of into, like, I don't know, developing more psychic abilities or, you know, becoming some sort of life coach or, I don't know, even making videos on YouTube or starting a blog about these sort of things or experiences, writing a book or an ebook or offering your services, your spiritual services, some sort, whatever this is, okay, whatever you want to call it. If there's something that you've been always kind of drawn to or interested in doing or you've admired people who do it and you've been really kind of edging your way more and more into it, if you're really seeing the number seven, that could be like kind of like a nudge on you to say like, do it, like go for it, do it, like dive into it and go for it. If this is something that you want to do, then do it because number seven in a way is like you have, I mean, we all have unlimited access to intuition and higher power and all this energy and stuff but some people just tune into it and some people never do some people kind of tune into it some people really tune into it if you find yourself to be a person who can really tune into it or kind of tune into it or you enjoy tuning into it or this is something that you feel that you have something to offer people that you can offer some sort of healing or guidance or whatever and you feel like this is something you want to do then go for it because that's what number seven is kind of telling you. Overwhelmment, a feeling of overwhelmment during any part of life, especially when you're diving deep into yourself and kind of changing every aspect of yourself. Overwhelmment is completely normal and it's nothing to be afraid of, it's nothing to be ashamed of, it's nothing to panic about. This is normal, it is all part of the process. And another thing to keep in mind is that you should always go inwards. Your guidance wants you to go inwards and that is where you find the answers. When you go inwards, that's where you find the peace of mind that you are seeking. Everything that you are seeking is inwards. So when you see number seven, let's say you just asked a question onto the universe and then you start seeing number sevens, that is like directly the universe telling you whatever it is you just asked, you can find it within yourself. So go find it. Meditation, yoga, walks in nature, spending time with animals, automatic writing, um, even reviewing your journals or listening to someone that you uh, feel really in tune with, that you resonate with, you know, like reading a book of an author that you resonate with or listening to a video or a documentary that resonates with you. Just whatever it is, just find the answer within. Even just a few seconds of quiet could just give you that, whoa, yeah, that was what I needed. Number seven is called lucky number seven. We refer to it often as that because it is a number to tell you it is now time in your life more than ever to expect miracles. In general, every single day of our lives, we should be expecting miracles, but especially when you are seeing number seven, it is to know that you need to either start expecting miracles or you need to continue expecting miracles or expect bigger miracles or larger miracles or just know that these miracles, the moment that you start expecting them is the moment they start manifesting or happening. And it's not about holding on to it and being like, I really need this. It's just about having almost an attitude of like, royalty is not the right word. I just really can't think of the right word, but it's, it's this like knowing that you are worthy of a miracle. That might be the best way. Other than that, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, in a comment below, let me know what are the number combinations that you guys notice the most and if there are any number combinations that you guys would like me to talk more about and make, create a video about, then let me know in the comments as well. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Welcome to Soul and Vibration. Hey guys, my name is Kai. I am a personal development consultant and your numerologist. Thank you for visiting Soul and Vibration. This Power of Numbers video is about the number seven. 
The number seven is your truth seeker. The number seven likes to dig deep, investigate, and bring the truth out. People who are strongly associated with the number seven tend to be loners. They enjoy their own company and they like to spend time questioning things, questioning why and how. If you are strongly associated with the number seven and you are operating in the low vibration of this number, you will find that you don't trust at all. Whenever in the low vibration, this number does not trust. This number can tend to be a bit paranoid and overthink things. The traits of the number seven is very important because Without the number seven, who will dig deep research and tell the truth? But try not to dig too deep and research so much where you find yourself questioning everything and trusting nothing and isolating yourself from the world around you. When the number seven is not aligned with their spirituality, their connection to source and creator. This is a number that is hard to be around because the number seven is associated with spirituality. The number seven is a faithful number, a number that doesn't have a hard time um, with blind faith like some other numbers would. So when the number seven's faith is broken, this number can go through a lot of can go through depression and deep sadness. So if you are associated with the number seven, it is very important to stay on your spiritual journey and continue connecting and spending time with nature and make time for the people you love. It is great to love your own company, but open up and invite some people in. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. First consider this. It is an undeniable fact that the number seven is a biblical number of completion or perfection or specifically divine authorship. Over 500 times in the Bible the number seven is used to show the touch of God or divinity upon something. This begins with the seven first days of creation and the seventh being declared by God as holy. When we look at the natural world around us, we discover that there are amazing arrays of sevens. There are seven continents on the globe. Modern geographical classification schemes count seven oceans in the world. There are seven colors in a rainbow. There are seven notes on a musical scale. There are seven stars in the Big Dipper and this heavenly sign has been used to point to the North Star or the Guiding Star since the most ancient of times. Seven objects in our solar system are visible to the naked eye. Seven digits in a row has been proven over and over to be the average limit of memory for most human beings. Thus we have only seven digits in our phone numbers. There are seven metals of antiquity upon which civilization was based. The periodic table of elements consists of seven distinct levels. And on and on the sevens in the world around us go, each representing God's divine touch of completeness upon something. Now with this in mind, consider again the very first words of the Bible, the very first verse, one sentence, translated in English as in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It contains exactly ten words. 
but in the original Hebrew there are exactly seven words. And these seven words possess seven distinctive features of the number seven contained within that sentence. As far as anyone has been able to determine thus far, only this one verse in all the Bible contains seven features of the number seven out of seven words. Consider these seven features. Feature number one. The number of Hebrew words in this verse is exactly seven. Feature two. The total number of Hebrew letters in the seven words is exactly twenty-eight, or four times seven. Feature three. The three leading words in this verse of seven words are, of course, God, the subject, and heavens and earth, the objects. The number of letters in the Hebrew words that make up these three words is exactly fourteen, or two times seven. The number of letters in the remaining words of the verse is also fourteen, or two times seven. Feature number four. The expression of the two objects of this sentence, the heavens and the earth, in Hebrew, is made up of fourteen letters, or two times seven. Feature number five. The shortest word is in the middle. The number of letters in this word, and the word to its left, is seven. The number of letters in the middle word, and the word to its right, is also seven. Feature number six. There are three important nouns in this first verse, God, heaven, and earth. The numeric gamatra values of these three nouns are 86, 395, and 296, respectively. Gamatra is the 3,000-year-old Hebrew rabbinical practice of assigning numerical values to each of the Hebrew letters. When these three numerical values are added together, the total value is 777, or 777, or 111, 111 times 7. In God's manner of biblical expression, this triple intensification of his perfect number 7 is the strongest possible manner of speaking the touch of his divinity. And feature number 7. The numeric value of the only Hebrew verb in this verse, created, or bara, is 203 which is exactly 29 times 7. These sevens, these numeric features or facts, are strangely hidden beneath the surface. They are truly beyond the view of ordinary readers of the Hebrew text, and they are discovered only by special investigation and counting. Surely they could not have been foreseen or purposely placed there by the original author. According to the law of chances, for any one feature of a seven-word sentence to be a multiple of seven accidentally is only one chance in seven. But for seven features of this one seven-word sentence to be a multiple of seven accidentally is one chance in 823,543. An exponentially amazing impossibility, especially considering that the number seven is used purposely by the biblical writers over 500 times from Genesis to Revelation to indicate the divine touch of God. It is as though God is telling those who have eyes to see in the very first verse that his divine touch is upon this word we call the Bible. This startling revelation of sevens has only been discovered in the last few years of human history. Did you know that the number seven is so insane that it shouldn't even exist? 
It has a hard time fitting into mathematics for one thing, and for this reason alone the power of lucky number seven is astounding. But is there perhaps an explanation of why seven might be a lucky number? Is seven much more powerful and mysterious than we think? Let's get started and take a look at seven insane reasons why the lucky number seven is so mysterious. Number seven. This might be the most obvious, insane reason of them all. Did you know that seven is a number used in almost every religion? But why? Well, only God seems to know the answer to that. In Christianity, there are seven days in creation, and God rested on and sanctified the seventh day. There are seven last words, too or seven last sayings of Jesus on the cross. In Islamic tradition, there are seven levels of earth. In Japan, there are the seven lucky gods. The Antakarana symbol is created with three sevens, which represent the seven chakras, the seven colors, and the seven sounds. But why is seven a spiritual number? Could seven be lucky because it somehow connects to God in some curious way? I'll try and explain this later. Number six. six. Did you know that on the seventh day something strange happens to your newborn baby? Don't worry, baby will be fine. In fact, after baby is born, baby will feel even better after seven days because the umbilical stump usually dries up and falls off on the seventh day. See, nothing to worry about, but a little insane, don't you think? Number five. five. There are seven notes in the musical scale. The seven note scale is actually pretty natural and logical and is based on another odd match, the Roman alphabet. Of course our ears can hear a wider range than this, but the octaves that part each note are very similar, just higher and lower in range. When a new note was discovered, it became a natural stopping point. The insane thing is that although many cultures around the world were never connected, not even in trade, over time each culture found these natural stopping points of seven musical notes on their own. Talk about an insane coincidence. Or is the number seven trying to tell us something? Is it more mysterious than we think? Number four. Seven is the largest number of objects most people can remember. When the rotary dial was invented for the telephone in the mid-1920s, they were worried people would misdial all the time, straining a young but growing telephone network. The solution? Chunk data to seven digits to deal with the limitations of the human brain. We can best remember seven numbers, so telephone numbers were broken down into smaller chunks. That's why we have the seven digit phone number today. Now you'll never forget another telephone number, right? Number three. I love rainbows, don't you? Rainbows have seven colors. The color wheel has seven colors too. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These colors are visible through a single wavelength of light. Colors that are too close in wavelength are indistinguishable. Basically, they're like the musical scale. The seven colors create all the other hues, like the seven notes create the entire range of octaves. Another coincidence? Insane. Number two. Seven is used in mysterious ways. Throughout history, people and empires have been applying the number seven to cities, places, and things to give them inexplicable subconscious power. There are the seven hills of Rome, the seven wonders of the world, the seven deadly sins, the seven dwarfs. The opposite sides of a dice always equal the number seven when added. And yes, the lucky number seven too, which takes us to our number one insane reason why seven is so mysterious. Number one. Seven is so insane, it shouldn't even exist. The odd thing is that although it would seem on the surface that the logical mind invented seven, it can't understand it. Logic can't explain it. 
It does not fit into the mind's way of calculating. Let's break it down. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10 can be created through multiplication. They create each other too. The number 7, however, cannot be created through multiplication or division. It cannot create any of the other numbers either. This fact makes 7 very mystical and confusing. The biggest mystery for me is that 7 can't be divided into pi or a 360 degree circle. Yet the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10 can. Thus, if you see pi as representing the wheel of karma or the major arcana in taro, you will realize that 7 belongs outside of the circle of life and it symbolizes the power of the divine. Since 7 defies the logic of math, which describes our physical reality, it is therefore of a non-logical quality. Does it belong to that which we truly are? A spiritual self as pure spontaneous consciousness, perhaps? Does 7 represent the divinity in all of us? Or does 7 tell our minds that they are limited and not in control? One thing is certain, our minds are not able to explain and experience God as pure awareness or the true self or whatever you want to call it through logic and seven makes no logical sense. Seven belongs to the mystical, spiritual realm of the divine. No wonder it's a lucky number, right? Hey guys, Colin Chi, Certified Nutritional Consultant. I'm uh, going to do a little numerology talk on number seven, okay? So if you're life path seven, or if you are a destiny number seven, or if you're a day number seven, or whatever prominent number seven is in your chart, this should give you a general overview of number seven. Um, so there's a lot to it. Uh, numerology is great stuff. Number seven. Okay, a number seven is very rigid and stable and sharp as a number. Look at the physicality of the number. It's also on the physical plane. Um, and so numbers that are sharp lines and, and straight lines are more stable. They're more rigid. Uh, number seven is a receiving and absorbing number. Okay, in that corner there, information is coming in and absorbing into that corner you know they're very they're very much uh, researchers and searchers for answers seekers of answers they are all about being alone uh, space and privacy in order to think and in order to analyze and in order to philosophize they're the philosophers they're the most spiritual number this was Pythagoras's uh, favorite number um, and in his school, uh, his students would actually take their vows on the seventh day uh, of the month, I believe. Um, uh, and and uh, something ha having to do with number seven. Uh, and if you are a number seven, in, in ancient times, you were often pulled out um, to go into the priesthood and study as a priest. Uh, because number seven is very religious. They're mystical. They're metaphysical. They are... Um, ph philosophical, psychological, um, they're all about all that kind of occult, uh, religious, um, deeper kind of stuff. Um, number seven is ruled by Neptune, uh, which is associated with Pisces. Now, Neptune is all about illusion, delusion, uh, dreams, uh, escapism, uh, mystery, uh, drugs. So these people have a tendency to escape into drugs. These people also suffer a lot. It's all about suffering and sacrifice. And you need to embrace suffering and sacrifice for the wisdom you will gain from it if you're a number seven. But discern uh, when you should sacrifice. Don't be overly sacrificial either. Uh, but Pisces is known as a more sacrificial type sign. Uh, that's related to number seven. Uh, number seven is, um, you know, Jesus was a number seven. Uh, Picasso was a number seven. Stephen Hawking was a number seven. So you can either be into advanced degrees in higher education, or you can be uh, in the clergy, or you could be even a uh, you know a scientist, a physicist like Stephen Hawking, um, or you could be very very creative. Usually, you guys have decent business ideas, but not 
uh, the greatest business application ability. Um, sometimes you're a poor judge of characters, but yet you're also intuitive. Um, so that could go either way, I think. Um, you're very sensitive. Um, you're rebellious. You don't want to take advice. You only want to give advice. You can sometimes be a little bit rigid um, and a little bit too opinionated almost. Um, but you're very rebellious. You wouldn't do well to be under the authority of some serious boss. You know, you have to be your own boss. You need to go your own path uh, in your life. So, um, yeah. Um, Number seven, you know, you can be a healer, a teacher. You know, once you've gained all this knowledge through research and analyzing and, and studying um, and being alone and thinking and studying and, and, and coming up with practical solutions to, to uh, philosophical dilemmas, you know, you, you can teach those at some point when you gain enough of that. But, you know, you, you crave a lot of experience and you are on the physical, practical, doing plane. So... Hopefully you will do something physical and practical with all that spiritual stuff you've you've uh, researched and gained and learned um, and been into. Um, so you're often very clever with your hands and, and you're skilled with your hands. You could be a butcher, you could be a carpenter, you could be a surgeon. Um, you know, number seven is also associated with, with compassion. So you could be in the medical field in, in that way, maybe. But compassion is something I think you guys don't develop right away. That takes time, I think, to develop uh, for you guys. Because sometimes you don't understand the needs of others that well because you're so caught up in that Neptunian, you know, illusion, kind of in your own world kind of place, you know, and you're alone a lot. So you don't have great objective, you know, you're not that objective very idealistic you're very romantic um and uh you know so there's that um number seven seven that word starts with an s that's the number one I, I see inherently in number seven number one and it kind of looks like a number one almost you know um it's sort of um number one is kind of aggression ambition leadership pioneering initiating energy willpower um self ego independent so number sevens are independent um but you know they can be committed if they are committed um they can be loyal to their spouse or whatever but sometimes these people will be very highly under un, you know misunderstood um because they're alone a lot you know and because you know they only call you maybe when they need something or you know you might think they're a bad person because of it but really they just they're not a social person and they don't like being social um that's just how it is so um you know just honor them for their great you know in intuitive answers and deep deep uh questions and and their analytical mind that's always philosophizing you know that's it's, it's those are great qualities um Seven eleven. There's seven days of the week, you know. Uh, some people link number seven to female energy because there's four um, weeks consisting of seven days in the cycle of the moon, and Cancer is the moon um, that's female. But more than anything, I think it's a male energy. Uh, but that's, you know, some people think it's somewhat female. Um, yeah, most people will tell you though odd numbers are male even numbers are female so it's an odd number i would say it's male primarily and i find a lot of the sevens i talk to are male or coming off with male energy even if they're female even in their chart it's showing male energy um it's uh again it's neptune um seven eleven what else is there seven you know, seven days of the week seven god created god created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh day so seven can be associated with rest and reflection um reflecting and planning on where you're going to go in the future you know and uh 
and taking time alone and just resting. I think you guys need to embrace the fact and if you're the type of person that's out there too much because you're just wanting to distract yourself from your own real self um, and, you're, and you're getting into that escapist attitude, you need to face yourself a little more and take some time alone because you're a number seven and that's gonna help you. Your destiny is your mind. To develop your mind, develop the higher mind, develop divine wisdom, divine love. Um, it's the most sacred, most spiritual number. Um, and uh, your destiny is your mind, you know? So uh, be careful with being too harsh, critical, judgmental. Um, because you're so spiritual, you're gonna be on a whole nother level than most of the people out there. Be careful of developing a high horse. Um, I can understand where sevens are coming from because I have been a number seven. Uh, my first pinnacle is number seven, um, which is the first 31 years of my life. I've been a number seven energetically, primarily. That's what shows in my chart. And so I understand needing time alone to think because you're coming up with really deep important answers for all of humanity psychological fixes for you know and you are really 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 thinking deeper than anyone you know um, and that's why you study ancient things and that's why you study all these interesting things because there's so much out there and a lot of people just don't expand their mind and number sevens we're interested in expanding our minds and we crave a lot of experiences and because we crave so many experiences we often can suffer a lot uh, and and you know because we're on that physical plane sometimes we get too much into the physicality materialistic things um, and um, you know and you need to balance that with some discipline and some discernment you know you need to be you need to have self-discipline so you don't go overboard with you know with everything and you need to also get out there from time to time don't get too caught up in being alone all the time either it's all about balance if you want to feel healthy and be healthy you know sometimes it's okay to have imbalance in your life if you can take it for a little while and you're really trying to achieve something specific and, and you know you're not gonna be able to be balanced that might be okay for a little while but you're not gonna be able to sustain it forever you know people do change and the number will change your numbers will change daily monthly um, you know, once you hit 29 or 30 or 31, depending on when your pinnacle changes, you know, then you're going to become a, a, a new energy. You know, you might turn into a number six or a number four or number three, you know, and that's how these charts go. You're never like the same number forever, but you still have those basic core numbers, you know, like your life path, your destiny, your day number, and your, um, uh, what the heck's the other one? and your soul urge those are your core numbers meditate on them this has been number seven hope hopefully that gave you enough information i'm sure i got more somewhere in my skull but i'm gonna call it quits because i don't want to overwhelm you with too much information uh so i hope you enjoyed it colin chi numerologist certified nutritional consultant if you want a consultation uh, uh, for nutrition or for numerology, um, hit me up, colinchi at gmail.com. I'm charging $35 for charts. Um, I charge $20 for an explanation of the chart. But there's a lot already explained on the chart. Um, it, it, you know, and I offer three different kinds of charts. So hit me up. I can tell you a lot of interesting answers to and help guide you, tell you what personal year you're in. You know what you need to do this year not do this year you know where you're at in your life it's all about self-awareness i can help you remind yourself of who you are um, it's a great way to be self-aware this is ancient knowledge it comes from hindu arabic it's very very old it became popular in greece from pythagoras and but he you know he studied in egypt this stuff goes into many cultures the chinese the babylonians a lot of them had their own numerical uh, and numerology systems. You know, uh, Jewish language, uh, the Hebrew language, uh, was actually a numerical system. Um, you know, that gets into Kabbalah. You know, this stuff is uh, it's deep, and a lot of ancient cultures believed in it. And uh, you don't need to believe in it once you study it because it's so accurate; it's not even a question anymore. 
so hit me up, colinchi at gmail.com. I'll put a link below in the description. Um, and um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Colin Chi. Rise. Take a deep breath in with me now and raise your vibration. Kiss your higher self and exhale in the peace that you have connected with Divine Source. Today we're going to discuss the spiritual meaning to the beautiful number seven. Lucky number seven, but it goes much, much deeper. The spiritual meaning to number seven is you are being divinely led. When you see this beautiful number, be reminded that you are on the right path. That is your confirmation that this is the path of spiritual enlightenment. You are a leader that is blessed and aware of the unlimited energy that makes one successful. Be it love, your career, be it inner peace, spiritual development, Acknowledge the vastness of your unlimited potential to lead and serve in the capacity you were and are meant to be in. Seven means your life mission is calling and so are those you are meant to help. They will follow your direction so keep your integrity sharp and acutely focused. Seven says you are highly sensitive and keenly aware of the unseen and know how to use the human abilities you were born into while sharpening your spiritual gifts at the same time. When you see this beautiful, magical number seven, when it shows up in everything you see, touch, hear, strive for the top and keep climbing as you receive each victory along your life's journey. This may be your twin flame journey, your soulmate journey your life mission. Stay determined and resist the feeling of being undermined. Seven is reminding you that they know not what they do. You are to serve as example and teach. The spiritual meaning to the beautiful number seven means you are a wise sage and are meant to lead the masses in educating in your craft. Do not doubt yourself. You are fortunate and blessed. Continue on that path. Success is yours when you see this beautiful number. Pay attention to your focus. You have to believe to receive and apply it in your earthly life in this lifetime. Do not wait for the next lifetime to achieve your goals. The time is now. You are being led in the right direction. You must have faith. Trust in your spiritual gifts and your power to control the outcome. Whether this beautiful, magical number, this beautiful, lucky, successfully blessed number seven appears in an object, a symbol, 
there is a spiritual communication coming through. Seven confirms you are manifesting beyond your wildest dreams and cannot imagine the unlimited potential that exists within your auric field. Honey, your energy is manifesting that powerful, optimistic vision. Raise your vibration. The spirit realm says answer your call and journey deeper within to locate your passion that leads to your soul mission. Your true love. Your life purpose. When you see this beautiful number, you are meant to prevail and accomplish. Victory belongs to you. Security is found when you follow the signs as this beautiful number is coming through. It is written, where you are led is the right place. Pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to the words that come across. Spirit is leading you into new directions and you are not alone. You are leading an army of supporters and educating the masses along the way. You are the lead in any twin flame manifestation and you are being inducted into that authoritative role. You are going in a new direction that is lined with unconditional love. And absolutely, this includes romantic love. When you see this beautiful number appear, number seven, you are being pulled away from toxic love, abusive relationships, unworthy of your soul, your power, your love. And you are being pulled into the path of the type of love that exists inside your soul. True. Pay attention to your circumstances when you see the number seven. See through the reasons you are moving to a new location. Moving away from a specific person or situation. You are being divinely guided to seek further into why spirit is leading you in a specific direction. Dear love, look within. You are a leader and an educator. Integrity is your foundation. Speak up, speak your truth and be heard. If it is your romantic partner, your twin flame you seek, your soul mate, your lifetime grow old with partner, continue on your path with persistence and determination. Remember you are a wise sage, an old soul and positioned to share spiritual guidance to all who will listen. Many blessings. Take a moment and reflect 
and what your spiritual guidance is showing you through this beautiful, magical, blessed number seven. Basically, looking at the lyrics that Seven showed me and the kind of music that he's bringing up to the, you know, to par. Basically, he's he's bringing a different style. He's talking the truth. He's speaking, you know, he's it's reality. He's not talking about this is how high my rims are or this is what I do in the street or whatever. He's speaking the truth. He's speaking a day to day life basis. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's actually. If he was a person that you could actually speak to, his rhyme, basically, if you listen to his rhyme, he's talking to you directly. It's like he, you're having a personal conversation. 